friends, it's me, Miss Bethany. And today we're talking about space, outer space. What do you think of outer space? It's like a big mystery. It's ginormous. Like space is so big, I can't even picture how big it is because there's so much we don't even know. It just goes on forever. And scientists have found out a whole lot, but they're finding out more every day which is pretty exciting to know that there's so much to learn about what's out there. When I was younger, to learn all the planets, we sang a song like this. Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the planets of the solar system. I still remember that song from when I was your age, that was a long time ago. Sometimes singing a song helps us remember. Maybe we'll sing it again at the end after we learn a little bit about all these planets. First off is the sun, which isn't a planet at all. The sun is actually a star and it's the closest star to Earth, which is the planet that we live on. The sun is super duper duper hot. It gives the sunlight that our plants need on Earth and it keeps us warm and cozy so we don't freeze our booties off. The sun, planets, moons, space rocks are all part of our solar system. And the sun is at the center of this solar system, so it's pretty important. It's a lot bigger than planet Earth. In fact, you could fit a million planet Earths inside the sun. That's pretty crazy to think about how big that is. The Earth travels around the sun in a circle called an orbit. It takes one whole year for the Earth to make it all the way around the sun. So how many times have you been around the sun? I'll give you a hint. It's however old you are. I've now been around the sun 35 times <laughs> and I feel it. There's eight different planets that orbit around our sun, including, of course, Earth. The sun doesn't just give us warmth, but it gives us light. Let's do a little demonstration of how this works, shall we? This will be our sun, giving off its light and warmth. This will be our Earth. It's round, hmm? And right here is you. Oh. So, if you're over here and the sun is over here, shining its rays, you can't see it. That means it's nighttime, it's dark out, and you're probably asleep. But as the earth turns, as it's doing all the time, it shines where you are. And now you're awake because it's morning time. You go about your day with the sun shining. In the afternoon, it looks like it's way up high in the sky. As the earth keeps turning, it turns away from the sunlight. So then where you are is dark again and it's nighttime all over again. Whoever lives on this side of the earth, the opposite where you are, has daytime when you are sleeping. How crazy is that? So on the other side of the earth, it's daytime. And then when it's daytime for you, it's nighttime for everyone else on that side of the world. So that's how we have our days and our nights. We face the sun. When it's daytime, the sun is facing us. When it's nighttime, we're facing away from the sun. It's kind of hard to picture all this. We're just living our lives, going to school, sleeping in our beds, and all the while, our planet is spinning around in a circle and orbiting around a big, huge, fiery star ball. Whoa, that is pretty crazy. Most of our Earth is covered in water, which we call oceans. That's why our planet is so blue. Earth is a super special planet because it's the only one that we know about that has life. It has people and plants and animals and our planet supports us all. How amazing is that? It's not just planets that orbit the sun though. It's also the moon. When you look up into the sky at night and see that big white thing, it's the moon. The moon is a big cold rock. The moon orbits around the earth just like the earth orbits around the sun. It takes about 27 days for the moon to go all the way around our earth. The moon can sometimes look bright, but it's actually a really cold, dark place. It looks bright only when the sun's light reflects or bounces off of it. If you'll notice, the shape of the moon that you see can change. 
This is called the phases of the moon. The phases change as the moon orbits around the Earth. When there's a new moon, you can barely see the moon at all. Then as it turns, it kind of starts to look like a banana shape. We call that a crescent. That's the waxing crescent. As it continues to turn, you can see more of it. And we call that the first quarter. Then it continues to turn and becomes the waxing gibbons. As it keeps turning, we can see almost the whole moon, which looks like a big circle. And it keeps turning, and then we see less and less until it's a new moon again. It might be a cool experiment to go out once a week and look up at the sky and see what phase the moon is at. You can use crayons or markers to record what it looks like. One time we even used Oreo cookies. That was fun because we got to bite a lot of cookies into the shape of moons, which means that we were eating lots of cookies. The moon is the only place that we've actually landed in our solar system. Astronauts shot up in a rocket and landed on the moon. Our Earth is surrounded by air called an atmosphere, but the moon doesn't have that, so you can't breathe in space. Astronauts need special equipment and spacesuits so they can survive. If something is called a planet, that means it's round and it orbits around a star. Just like our Earth and the other planets in our solar system that I was singing about earlier. The four planets closest to the Sun are mostly rock, and they're called terrestrial planets or rocky planets. The four planets farthest away from the Sun are big balls of burning gas, and they don't have a solid surface. Mercury is the smallest planet and the closest to the Sun. It orbits the Sun faster than any other planet. One year on Earth, the time it takes to orbit the Sun is 365 days, but one year on Mercury is only 88 days. So you'd be a lot older if you lived on Mercury. During the daytime on Mercury, it gets super hot, and during the nighttime, it gets freezing cold. Venus is the hottest planet in our solar system. It has an atmosphere of thick clouds, and the clouds hold in that heat. The Sun's light reflects off Venus's clouds, so it looks really bright. In fact, it's the brightest planet we can see in the sky. Mars is more like Earth than any other planet in our solar system. In fact, scientists think that there may have been flowing rivers of water a long, long time ago. Finding water on another planet like Mars would mean that people might actually be able to live on that planet one day. What? Jupiter is our solar system's biggest planet. It's so big that all the other planets in the solar system could fit inside Jupiter. It also has what we call the Great Red Spot, which is the equivalent of a hurricane on Earth, except it's been happening for hundreds of years. <gasps> a hurricane that lasts for hundreds of years? No thanks, I'll stick to planet Earth. Earth only has one moon, but Jupiter has 64 moons. What's a planet made with 64 moons? Ah, Saturn. Saturn has sparkly rings around it. The rings are made up of billions of bits of icy rock. Some of the bits of rock are as tiny as a speck of dust, and some of them are as big as a huge mountain. From far away, it kind of just looks like one ring, but it's actually thousands of rings of this icy rock. Saturn has at least 53 moons. They actually sent a spacecraft called the Cassini up to Saturn in 2004. It was the first spacecraft to orbit Saturn, and it kept orbiting until 2017. When a spacecraft goes up to orbit around the planet but doesn't ever land, that's called a flyby. Ah, Uranus. Uranus is tipped on its side. Scientists think that a long, long time ago, a huge space object, like a planet, crashed into it and caused it to tip. It actually spins in the opposite way that Earth does, and it takes 84 Earth years for Uranus to orbit around the Sun. Uranus is the coldest of all the planets, and it actually has about 13 rings. They're just not as visible as Saturn's rings. Neptune is known as a gas giant. The weather on Neptune is crazy. It has winds that blow over a thousand miles an hour. <gasps> Whoa. Do you remember the great red spot on Jupiter? Well, Neptune also has a big storm like that, but they call it the great dark spot. Triton is one of Neptune's largest moons, and it has volcano-like eruptions that burst up from the surface. Gas and dust explode everywhere and then freeze because it's so cold. Then it falls back down like snow. Now that is some crazy weather. And then we have Pluto, poor Pluto. Pluto used to be called a planet, but then they said, nah, Pluto, you're just too tiny. And they started calling him a dwarf planet, which is just like a small planet. 
it takes Pluto 248 Earth years to orbit the sun. Wow, Pluto, taking your time, huh? Have you ever seen a comet shooting through the sky? A comet is sort of like a huge, dirty snowball. It's made of icy gas and rock. Comets have huge orbits around the sun, and sometimes it gets too close to the sun and starts to melt. And that's when we see a little tail following the comet along. The universe is everything in our solar system and outside of it. The universe is so ginormous that it's hard to even picture it. For a long time, people have looked up at the sky and used their imaginations to draw lines connecting the stars, making pictures out of the stars. These are called constellations. Constellations are like maps in the sky, and there's 88 of them. Have you ever looked up at the stars and imagined that the stars were pictures? Or have you ever been able to pick out constellations? Things like the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper? There's a lot more to learn about outer space because it's so huge, you could probably learn about it forever. But we don't have all that time right now. If you're curious about what those stars and planets look like with your own eyes, you can get a telescope and go out at night and look through it. Using a telescope makes it bigger so you can see what's going on. You might be able to find some constellations, see a planet or a moon, and get a closer view of what's happening up there. I'm sure we'll circle back to more space stuff in another episode. Now you have a little introduction to the planets and what's up there. Do you remember our song about the planets? Do you want to sing it with me? Let's do it. Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are the planets of the solar system. As an adult singing that, there have a few qualms, like the sun not being a planet, but I remember that song like 33 years later after learning it. Sometimes singing stuff really helps us stick in our brain. So if you need to sing the planet song to remember all the planets, go ahead and practice that. I can't wait to see what cool things you find out in our solar system. You get to dig in, scientists, and maybe one day you could be an astronaut shooting into space to find your own adventures. Learning about space is pretty cool because like I said, the possibilities are endless. Scientists are learning new things about our universe every day. Who knows, one day we might even discover that aliens have been watching us this whole time, shaking their heads like, what's going on down there? But until then, keep an open mind and keep learning about what's out there. I'll see you next time.